Hey, welcome back to On The Level Leadership. And for those who are new to this channel, my name is Tammy and I'm a leadership and career coach as well as consultant. I help transform new leaders or good leaders into great leaders. And that can all be done through the application of key leadership principles or the application of positive leadership behaviors. So as a leader, you need to be clear about how your leadership benefits your organization. This week, I'm gonna provide three big benefits that effective leaders can actually have on organizations. So while um, really great leadership can have a, a number of positive benefits to an organization, I wanted to cover three of those today. The first is that an organization will be more performant. A Harvard Business Review article that I read this morning actually shared, uh, stated that, and I'm going to quote from, from the article stating, effective leaders were more likely to have performing teams. In other words, thanks to an effect called social contagion, if you're a good boss, you likely have a good boss. And if you're a good boss, you probably have very performant employees. This is because like tends to hire like. We see this in organizations all the time. A toxic leader comes in and starts hiring toxic managers who then hire toxic people. Kind of happens, right? Or alternatively, you have a very strong leader who has uh, some very keen leadership principles and, and competencies, and they hire people who are very similar to them, and it sort of snowballs into this really positive effect for the organization. Less performant and insecure leaders at times will hire people who won't make them look bad. So in theory, they're less performant, their employees might be less performant for two reasons. One, because they're not being managed or coached properly in their roles, or alternatively, because they simply don't have the skill sets or the acumen to actually perform the job. And that is because the insecure leader didn't want to be made to look bad or one-upped, if you will, by their staff. But a great leader understands that they surround themselves by smarter and more capable people. Walt Disney was a perfect example of this. I talk about Walt all the time on this channel, but the reason why is because he had a set of, of senior uh, Imagineers that he hired to implement his vision. So Walt did not necessarily have the skills to build a castle or to design a ride or to design a ride system. He would have the vision of what he wants done and then he would hire the right skill sets and the right you know, leadership acumen to be able to effectively implement his vision. Great leaders also enhance uh, productive conversation and communication amongst the team members. So it becomes a safe space for people to share ideas and it's in those good ideas that innovation happens. And if you have a productive communication style and have established a safe environment for people to communicate, you can not only have great ideas, but you can course correct on things that maybe aren't working. You can learn from your mistakes and implement different strategies. Um, you know, the teams will feel more productive. They'll know that they are part of the company's solutions. And so they can see their value add to the organization through that. And as a result, they're going to feel more compelled to work hard for the company. Increasing a company's performance can mean the difference between losses and profits. So it's really important that, you know, leaders in organizations work towards more performance. And the only way to do that is to use key uh, leadership principles such as modeling the way or such as challenging the process or such as recognizing and, and honoring people's contributions because those kinds of things really increase a company's competitive edge. So while Walt Disney is struggling right now in this current time of 2021 with some of their staffing contingent or their cast members out of the California park right now, overall Disney as a company has had a, a strong uh, connection with uh, loyalty, uh, brand, um, brand pride, uh, a lot of the cast members as they're called or the staff that work within Disney's organizations often describe themselves as not only being loyal, but um, they take pride in their work and they, they love the role that they play in supporting the vision of the company and implementing you know, the various tasks and the various projects because they see themselves within it. The key there is to ensure that the performance is driven through positive leadership and not through fear, right? We don't want them to worry about their loss of job or their loss of their performance pay or to lose their status within the company and be demoted somehow. You know, that's not really what this is about. Performance should be driven by positive 
relationships within the organization and that the leaders recognize that implementing certain key behaviors will really help employees to feel uh, like they want to be more performant. The second big positive benefit that you will see with great leadership is that levels of engagement will increase in a company. So how one models the way also paves the way with how your staff or the organization will respond to your leadership. So Kuzes and Posner, the book that I call the Bible of Leadership, uh, is quite clear in, uh, in how to model the way. There's an entire chapter. It's the first key leadership competency or principle of this book. Uh, and there's a link down below should you be interested in this book for your own reading purposes. But uh, basically, if you engage regularly with your staff and you apply the key leadership principles that you will find in a book like The Leadership Challenge, you'll see a direct correlation with enhanced engagement from your staff. So what is engagement? Forb defines this as an emotional commitment that the employee has to the organization and its goals. So it's important because employees will always go the extra mile for an organization that they feel that they're being engaged in without even being prompted. So again, you know, they may do an extra hour of work or two to make sure that that project doesn't have issues with its timelines or that it meets its, its objective. And it's, they'll do it because they believe in the work. They'll, they'll do it because they, they feel that there's value in what it is that they're doing and will want to work tirelessly for the company. It is human nature to reflect back what a leader will demonstrate. It's sort of the same as a parenting thing where, you know, children do as you do, not as you say. So you have to really model the way. It's super important that you model the way when you're looking at how you want to engage your staff because they will engage the same way you engage them. Really, really key. The other piece is that commitment levels will increase in an organization. So Kuzis and Posner again articulate that the data is quite clear that workplace engagement and commitment are significantly related or correlated to how a leader behaves. So the commitment levels means that staff will come to work, are motivated to be part of that organization. They see their roles clearly. So what you're going to have is less turnover of staff, which by the way, can increase your profit margins because if you're not having to do marketing campaigns to hire people on a regular basis or sorry, staffing campaigns to hire people and you have to get them trained up and following others and shadowing and all that kind of stuff, that all costs money. So if you can reduce your turnover, you're going to reduce your overall business expenses uh, to be able to maintain your business lines. So there'll be less turnover. And those that are there are going to remain committed and loyal to the organization over time because it's recognizing its contributions and supporting its career, everybody's career growth in the process. So learning to trust your staff and delegating tasks so that they can independently work on those tasks on their own actually helps to build confidence within your team because they build the confidence in saying, oh, wow, I guess I can do this. The boss is trusting me with this. So obviously I have value here. And so doing that can actually help build loyalty. How you coach your employees through these tasks if they're struggling is really important as well. And it'll be important to uh, help them manage obstacles along the way so that they can build that confidence and, and grow in their careers. You know, gaining that sense of ownership, right, will, it, will, will just further increase their commitment to the company. So a final example of this is um, really from Richard Branson is a good example of this from Virgin is that, and I'm paraphrasing here, is that if you take care of your staff, they will take care of your customers for you. So essentially in this example, what Richard is saying is, you know, if you care for your staff and they understand and perceive that you have, you, you consider them of value, you not only build loyalty, brand loyalty from your staff, but you essentially create a commitment from your staff to treat your customers similarly. So obviously, if you want to serve your client base in a positive manner, you have to reflect that in your corporate culture, which is positive. So there are many benefits. Uh, I've only raised three of the larger ones that I've noted online around the implementation of great leadership in an organization. So if you want more on how to be a great leader, uh, you can visit my leadership playlist, which I'll link up above here. Or alternatively, uh, you can subscribe to this channel because I'm here on a weekly basis sharing information on leadership and or career coaching related topics. So if you're committed to becoming a more successful leader, I'm here to help. And so there's a link down below should you want to connect with me to see how a coach might help you get to that next level or help you become more effective in the leadership role that you are currently in. So thanks for watching On The Level Leadership. I really do appreciate you being here. I'll see you next week. Bye.